Hi everybody, I'm Stuart Hillard and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in today's quick and easy make, I'm going to show you how to make these really cute and fun book pillows. Now a book pillow is, just makes the greatest gift, um, particularly if you want to encourage someone or maybe yourself to do a little more reading, whether it's books, magazines, cookbooks, comics, who knows, it's all good reading. And the great thing about a book pillow is we've got this lovely pocket on the front of the pillow to tuck your book into. And then we've also got a handle on the top that means that we can carry our pillow and our book to a space underneath the tree or our favorite spot to cozy down. And it's really just a lovely thing to carry around. The pocket at the front has a faux binding at the top, which is one of my favorite finishes when I'm doing pockets. And it's really quick, really easy, very effective. You'll love that technique. But also that pocket lends itself very well to either a feature fabric, or if you do machine embroidery or applique, you could add some extra embellishments to that. So if you wanted to put, you know, Max's um, book pillow or Jessica's um, pillow, you could do that um, quite easily. So let me show you what you're going to need in order to make my book pillow. So I'm using some fabrics from my hot air balloon collection uh, for the Craft Cotton Company. And there's all sorts of really fun prints of hot air balloons and rainbows and uh, rain clouds and raindrops and, and inspirational sayings as well, like fly high and uh, ticket to ride. Um, so what you're going to need for your main cushion panel, you're going to need a 16 and a half inch square of main fabric. And you also want to cut out a 16 and a half inch square of quilt batting. And that could just be um, some scraps spliced together or something like that. You're also going to need a piece of backing fabric just for the back of your cushion um, or the inside really. You're not going to see this. So a piece of quilt weight cotton is fine, even a poly cotton. Um, I'm just going to base these layers together. So I'm going to use my favourite 505 basting spray and just spray the batting and smooth that fabric out. And then I'll flip the other side and do the same again. And that just holds the backing fabric onto the quilt batting. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same on the front as well. Um, whenever I make cushions, particularly if I'm using quilt weight cotton, I always like to add some batting and a backing fabric, um, even if I'm not gonna quilt them. And this isn't quilted, um, but what it does is it just strengthens the fabric. It makes it kind of more bouncy and resilient. It means that when you sit on the cushion or lean on it or squish it, it'll bounce back nicer, um, stay looking good. And it just makes the fabric handle better, a bit more like um, sort of interior design type um, fabric. So I've got those layers all spliced together now. So they're my 16 and a half inch squares. Now I'm also going to need two pieces of fabric for the pocket. I'm going to need a piece of fabric for the outer pocket. And I'm using this really fun stripe from the same collection, hot air balloons. And I've cut this, it's um, 16 and a half inches across. So the same width as the cushion, but um, nine and a half inches deep. So that's my outer pocket. And then I've got my pocket lining. Now my pocket lining is 16 and a half inches wide, but it's 10 inches deep. And I'll show you why when I sew them together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by making the pocket and I'm gonna put the two pocket pieces right sides together. And you can probably see that there that lining is longer half an inch longer, and that's for a reason. I'm gonna run this through my sewing machine, quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I'm just gonna sew across the top. Keep your edges nicely matched up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip that lining fabric up and away from the front. And my seam allowance is actually pushed upwards as well. So that's quite important. So I'm going to finger press 
that piece of fabric backwards. And then I'm gonna drop the lining fabric to the back. And I'm gonna match up my lower raw edges. Now what I'm gonna end up with is a lip of the lining fabric is gonna stay showing on the front and that's gonna create my faux binding. So what I need to do now is give this a press. And there we go. You can see we've got that lovely little lip of pink fabric that runs along the top of the pocket. Now what I'm gonna do is top stitch on the actual binding edge. And you can see there where I've just top stitched really, really close to that binding edge. It just neatens the edge and it holds the two pocket pieces together. So next up, I'm gonna lay my pocket on top of my cushion front and I'm gonna line up the fabrics at the bottom and at the sides and then I'm going to pin those layers together. Now, don't be surprised if you can see a little bit of that cream backing fabric peeping out. I've cut it slightly bigger, like I always do when I'm making a quilt sandwich. It'll get trimmed off before I make the cushion up, but it just gives me a little bit of wiggle room. And then once those layers are nicely pinned together, I'm going to sew around the sides and the bottom of the pocket. And that way I can just get rid of all of those pins. Now I'm not gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam this time. I'm gonna sew less than a quarter of an inch. All I'm really trying to do is attach all the layers together and get rid of any pins. I just find pins do a really important job, but they get in the way as well. So if I can get rid of them, then I certainly will. So we'll go across the bottom now. And just make sure that you're keeping all of your fabrics nice and smooth and flat. If you do find that you're getting any sort of wrinkling of your fabrics, um, you can always use a walking foot instead. And then just up the last side, pins out as I go. Excellent, we're done. So I've got my pocket attached now on those three sides. If you wanted to, you could divide the pocket up. So this is actually quite um, a wide pocket and probably even if you divide it up the center, you'll still have enough space for two books to go inside. But if you wanna leave it open so that you can get things like maybe soft toys in there instead, then you could leave that pocket open. Because you've got a cushion in it inside, that will fill everything out the pocket's not going to gape or drop open. So it's quite secure. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna trim off any extra backing fabric so that the edges are all nice and even. And there are a few sounds which I think are as lovely as the sound of really sharp fabric scissors going through fabric. Maybe the dinner gong at home. <laughs> okay, so that's the front of my cushion all done. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is make the handle for my pillow. So I've got a piece of fabric here and this is six and a half inches deep and it's ten to ten and a half inches long. Okay, so you want this rectangle of fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half like this and press it. And then I'm gonna open up the fabric again, and then I'm gonna press the raw edges of that rectangle in towards that center fold. So I'll end up with a narrower piece of fabric that doesn't have any raw edges on the outside. So press down the center first, and then raw edges in towards the center. It doesn't matter if they don't get right into the center, but near enough. A little gap is okay. Okay, so that's done. And then the last thing I need to do is to just fold it back in half along that original center crease and give it a final press. So what I end up with is this four layer thick, neatened um, strip of fabric. The ends are still raw and raggedy, but that's okay because they're gonna be tucked inside the cushion and stitched into a seam. Now, the last thing I need to do on my handle is to just top stitch about a quarter of an inch 
in from the folded edge. And I'll do that on both sides. So a slightly longer than normal stitch length, about three. And I'm gonna stitch all the way down. If you wanna make the handle even more decorative, you could actually run a piece of twill tape or some ribbon down the center of your handle. And again, just top stitch either side of that. If you are gonna add any embellishments like that, it's a really good idea um, just to use something like a fabric safe glue stick to stick the ribbon in place first and then top stitch so that it doesn't move. Okay, so now I need to attach my handle to my cushion front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the raw edges up with the top of my cushion. And I want them to be about five inches in from this outer edge. So you could measure in five inches and put your first um, bit of your handle and then five inches in from the other side. And again, put the handle in. I'm going to guesstimate and I'm gonna pin those in place. Looks near enough to me. And then I'm gonna baste them in place. So slightly longer than normal stitch length. And then I'm just gonna stitch across less than a quarter of an inch. Get rid of your pins, clip your threads. And you can just make sure that the handle is doing its job and you can get your hand through it. For the backing of my cushion, I'm gonna make an envelope back. Now an envelope back is probably the simplest way to make a cushion cover which you can get in and out of easily. To make it, what I've done is cut two rectangles of fabric for the backing. And these rectangles of fabric are 16 and a half inches uh, by 12 inches wide. Both the same. What this means is, is that there's gonna be an overlap in the center and you want quite a decent overlap, a few inches, so that there's no kind of bulgy back to your cushion. Now the um, inner edge that's gonna overlap, and it's a good idea to lay the fabric out in front of you, particularly if you're using something directional, <clears throat> the inner edges, the bits that are nearer to the center, we want to fold and neaten the edge, just that one long edge. And what I'm gonna do is just turn and press a double quarter of an inch hem. So quarter of an inch, and press and then fold it over and another quarter of an inch. I mean, mine's quite a generous quarter of an inch. It's probably more like half an inch, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same on the other piece, but again, it's the edge that's nearer to the center of the cushion. So another generous quarter of an inch seam allowance, turned into the center and pressed. So last thing I need to do is to top stitch to hold that hem in place. So again, slightly longer than normal stitch length. And so one. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same with the other part of the envelope back for my cushion. Okay, dial your stitch length back down to a normal stitch length for construction. And let me just show you what I've done here. So I've stitched that double hem in place, but it is just on one side. Now then, the last thing that I need to do is layer up my cushion. So I'm gonna turn my handle back down so it's pointing downwards, and then I'm gonna lay my fabrics down so the pretty side of the fabric, the back of the cushion, is facing against the pretty side of the front of my cushion, and that neatens side is towards the center. Then I'm going to get my other piece of fabric and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to lay it on top again with the neatened side facing in towards the centre. So there's my overlap and I've got about four to five inches of overlap. Um, that's a really nice bit of overlap. It uses a little bit more fabric, but what you end up with then is a backing which always stays together and is never gonna sort of bulge open like a shirt that's a little bit too small for the wearer. I know that feeling. So I'm just gonna match up both sides and make sure that everything's nice and neat. And I'm gonna pin my layers together. That's a really good idea at home to do this on a good flat surface and use plenty of pins. Once you've pinned either side, you wanna make sure that your overlap is nice and flat, not wrinkled. I like to put a pin at the overlap points. So here and here, 
This is where I'm actually overlapping here and here. So I will put those pins. The reason why I like to put those pins right there is because if any of the cushion is likely to sort of wrinkle up and fold back when I'm sewing all the way around the outside, it's that point. That's my kind of weak point, if you like. So I'm going to pin there and there just to make sure everything stays together. So that's all pinned. And now all I need to do is sew all the way around the outside of the cushion. Now to do this, I'm going to use a regular stitch length. I'm going to leave my quarter inch foot on, but I'm going to be slightly generous with my seam allowance. I'm going to go about three eighths of an inch. Um, I'm going to reinforce and then I'm going to sew all the way around. So I'm just going to make sure as I sew that I keep the edge of the fabric nice and flat. Turn the corner. If you wanted to, you could use a walking foot for this job. When you're sewing through lots of layers together, you can push the fabric along a little bit. You press a foot, might just push your fabric along a little tiny bit, but a walking foot will eliminate that. So again, just make sure when you get to that overlap, you're keeping everything nice and flat, really nice and neat. If you want to, when you're going over the side that has the handle on it, you could reinforce back and forth a couple of times over the handle. So now all we need to do is open up the envelope part at the back and we're going to turn the whole cushion through to the right side. Now you'll notice at this point I haven't done any zigzagging over the raw edge of my seam inside the cushion. We'd like to. And I think most of the time that's what we're going to do. So it's really nice and secure. But you definitely don't want to zigzag that raw edge until you've pushed everything through to the right side and checked that your seam allowance has actually captured all of the raw edges. Uh, can you imagine if you'd overlocked it, then turned it through and then discovered that you hadn't quite caught an edge, you've got all of that lot to unpick. Um, no fun at all. There's my envelope back, all nice and secure. There's the front of my cushion and my pocket. All I need to do now is put a cushion pad inside. And I've even got a top tip for making putting the cushion pad in a little bit easier. Right then, so putting a cushion pad inside um, an envelope back cushion can sometimes feel like you are fighting with um, a particularly unruly, um, I don't know what. <laughs> Um, but there is a really easy way of putting it uh, in. So what you're going to do is you've just turned your cushion cover through to the right side. Well, we're actually going to go back one step and um, just the outer half of the envelope back, we're going to turn back through so it's on the wrong side like that. So we've got one through on the wrong side and one through on the right side. Okay. So this one that's through and showing on the right side, this is where we're going to start. And we're going to put our cushion into that. This is usually the bit that's really hard, isn't it? Putting that first bit of cushion pad inside because we're fighting against an envelope back. But we've got rid of that envelope back at this point. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling that cushion pad in and I'm feeling with my fingers to make sure that the corners are pushed really nicely down into the corners of my cushion cover. Okay, so that's done. So now to put the remaining half, all I need to do is push down on the cushion pad and then flip the outer envelope part over the top. How easy was that? And now we've got our cushion pad inserted. We've got a pocket ready for our favorite book. Mine's The Wind in the Willows, just in case you were wondering. And we've got a handle to take it to our favorite tree to sit underneath and read a book. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial to make a book pillow and you'll enjoy making this project um, for all of your uh, very favourite people in the world. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video and uh, come back and catch all of our newest videos. Uh, it'd be great to see you again. Till next time, goodbye.